Recently, I've seen a common suggestion floating around on slash r slash competitive Overwatch. It's the idea that Blizzard should implement a scoreboard in competitive mode. Now, people have suggested many reasons why a scoreboard in competitive mode would be a good thing, but the overall it of the argument is that by introducing a scoreboard, underperforming players, namely the DPS, would know that they are underperforming and be convinced to switch to another character. This scenario is generally a pipe dream, but I'll deal with why this is later in my argument. For now, I'm going to focus on what the problem is with using a scoreboard to track player performance. In the course of my argument, I am going to point out that the biggest problem with a scoreboard is the simple fact that Overwatch is a complex team game, and thus any metric that could be used to measure player performance would be a bit flawed by itself without any context of the match. Even when paired with other stats being displayed, it would not paint a complete picture. For example, imagine a scoreboard that counted eliminations. Immediately, we hit a snag. Eliminations are counted if you did damage to an opponent that died soon afterward. I could do 30 damage to a tank, and if that tank proceeds to die, it counts as an elimination. Did I realistically contribute to the kill there? Probably not. I once played a match where I was Lucio, and I got golden eliminations. On paper, that looked pretty good. In reality, I didn't do that well. I just sprayed down people wildly with my primary fire. I would fire into masses of enemies and get hit markers, instead of targeting one person for more actual damage, or even the possibility of killing someone frail. So in the course of that match, I was only playing passably, and may have even been playing badly. And the reverse could be true as well. A player could be targeting single targets, actually concluding kills like a DPS should be trying to do. But the team wouldn't see that. They would see the Soldier 70 shit up there on the scoreboard scoring golden eliminations when the idiot was just spraying down the enemy team wildly with the occasional missile thrown in. Meanwhile, MLG McCree could be scoring sick headshots, destroying tanks like you would expect to see out of a Reaper, but in return he may not have a great amount of elims on a scoreboard. Who do you think contributes more to success here? I do acknowledge that a DPS should be aiming to get the most eliminations, since they should be involved in the majority of the kills. But it's not always a perfect measure, and certainly not a good one in terms of tracking performance. But what about counting final blows, you might ask? Again, we hit a snag here. The scoreboard displaying final blows would be extremely problematic, perhaps even more so than showing eliminations. This is a team-based game, where everyone's throwing projectiles. I could be D.Va swooping in and helping my DPS finish off a particularly durable enemy. I wouldn't be doing that badly, but it could not be near as much as the DPS are actually doing. But the scoreboard wouldn't say that I was doing badly. The scoreboard would say I was doing well since I was finishing the kill. And then look at what would result on the DPS side. His or her team would look at the scoreboard and say, Oh, you haven't gotten a lot of kills, not as much as D.Va. Why don't you just switch off? In reality, it could be a situation where the only reason D.Va is getting these kills is because the DPS is enabling her. I'm sure anyone experienced reading this post could imagine a variety of scenarios where this sort of problem could come into fruition and result in confusion and likely salt on either side of the debate. The idea that you could track damage is once again problematic. I'm sure anyone who's played this game knows the problem with this. Targeting shields could give you the most damage dealt easily, even if you aren't concluding kills. Soldier 76 was pre-nerf, and even post-nerf easy to get most damage with. Just point at Reinhardt's shield and hold down Mouse 1. I once got 11,000 damage with Soldier 76 in the first round of Anubis. Counting damage is the kind of idea that would end up crediting all the wrong people here. Under this idea, Bastion would contribute the most to the team, which is, of course, an absurd notion to any Platinum player who has tried playing him in competitive. It could even end up crediting the wrong DPS were there too on a team like people generally run. Let's say we aren't counting shields being damaged as damage, and we have a McCree and a Reaper. The Reaper should be targeting the tanks, while McCree should be targeting a variety of targets. Flankers, Farah. 
really anyone on his screen he thinks he can kill or deal damage to. The Reaper will do way more damage as a virtue of being built around confronting big, meaty targets, but it could be that the Genji on the enemy team could be carrying them rather than any tanks. And if the McCree is taking him out more than anyone else, then the McCree is doing more to help the team, even if his resulting damage output is lower as a result. As for tracking healing on a scoreboard. Tracking healing is a difficult prospect for tracking performance, and I'm sure you guys can immediately recognize the problem there. Healers contribute in different ways and in different amounts. Lucio can do AoE healing, and if he stays on that AoE healing, he's going to heal more than anyone else, with the possible exception of Ana pocketing the tanks. Mercy isn't going to heal near as much. In fights, she'll be aiming to burst heal, boost damage for a character when she is in burst healing, and hiding if she thinks her team's about to be wiped so that she can press Q to win. And then you get into Zenyatta, who should be constantly throwing damage and discord orbs at the enemy, and only occasionally throwing orbs of harmony to burst heal a person who isn't being healed fast enough by Lucio. Once again, characters contributing in different ways can fuck up a scoreboard. Thus, the scoreboard falls apart even when attempting to use it for tracking healer performance. Now, let's assume that competitive mode got a scoreboard in-game. Maybe it tracks every single factor listed above. Healing, damage, final blows, eliminations, and even more. Still not a perfect indicator of skill, but it's better than just implementing the Call of Duty scoreboard into Overwatch. Now what happens when you switch roles midway through the game? For example, you go McCree instead of Zenyatta to counter the far that your team can't seem to shake. Suddenly, you're not doing a large amount of healing. You're not getting a large amount of elims, at least compared to the previous DPS. You're not catching up to the DPS soon enough for your team to notice what a good job you're doing. What will the scoreboard do for your team then, other than not give an accurate picture of how you're doing in-game? The idea of a scoreboard seems nice, something you'd see on the subreddit and think, oh, that's nifty, but only as long as you don't delve too deeply into what it would actually turn into. People who already have trouble following what's happening in-game will look at the scoreboard and turn arguments for switching into heated ones, resulting in a fragmented, tilted team of people playing roles they aren't good at, or stuck in one role when they'd be far better off in another. And that's another problem. Maybe someone is DPS and they do have golden eliminations. But another player could like main McCree or something, or main Reaper, or even main Farah, because she's usable in some game modes in Season 2. Maybe they would be better off as the DPS. Scoreboard wouldn't show that. How the heck would you know? Scoreboards cannot show comparative advantage, guys. Plus, get real about thinking you can make any person switch if they're doing badly. If you're confronting a stubborn motherfucker who thinks they're doing well with a character they're not, there's not a lot you can say to change it. They're going to stay on the character they're on, and they're going to do badly. There's some people in this world that cannot be bought off or bargained with. They just want to have the enemy team on fire.